Ladies and gents, I feel like so out of place right now, honestly, because it has been months since I have covered low elo legends. I know there are people out there who watch all my content. I know there are also people, hold on. I think everybody's upset about the trees. Let me fix the trees. We don't want no stinking small trees. There we go. But um, but yeah, it's been a long time since I've been able to cover Loy the Legends because I've been busy with many things. Getting back to a normal schedule. And I'm very excited for this, man. Like, we've had a lot of high-level stuff with Hidden Cuff for many, many months. I want to see what the low ranks are doing. So in the blue, we've got Headbanger PSK. We've got a good old Headbanger here playing as the Portuguese. And then in the red, we have a player named Jose who hasn't done much yet, but I do remember Jose from like years ago. I, I, again, if you've watched Loi the Legends with me, you will remember Jose. I think this guy was a, was around 100 ELO before. Artie's going to hate me. Artie's going to message me later and say, uh, T90, how am I supposed to find that? But I have a distinct memory of him playing as the Teutons. On an Arabia game, he was in the northeast of the map. These games are live right now. Jose, where? Oh, there are the houses. I was like, Jose's not, ma not making houses. Jose is making houses. Jose just walked a long way to build the houses over here. Again, I have another memory of another game Jose played. He likes to make the houses far away. We'll see what comes back to me as we go. Uh, the map here is Mega Random. And it seems like they've got quite a few goats. So this is pretty low elo friendly, I would say. You never know what you're going to get generation-wise. There's the double berries. There's tons of goats. Um, there's deer. There's plenty of golden stone for them to find as well. And then there's also two useless swampy puddles. Uh, I don't know if you could consider this a puddle. But this area is pretty unhelpful, I would say. Now, we are three minutes into the game, and I believe we already have an auto scout sighting. This scout is weaving back and forth, and I think Headbanger said, I have found my goats, and I'm just going to boop that scout on the auto scout, and the auto scout is veering back and forth. So you always know it's an auto scout because auto scout's going to weave back and forth like this, and it also prioritizes the right corner, which means it could run directly into Jose's eco here. No freaking way, dude. No way. Jose? Jose? Okay, Jose didn't notice it, uh, but that's that's pretty funny. I mean, I think the scout will come back again at some point because the scout will go to the right and work its way this way. Now, Teutons have the cheap farms. Teutons have great cav. Teutons have great infantry. Um, I think the cheap farms is a bonus that's really, really nice at this rank. The Portuguese get some wood. From taking berries, though, and Headbanger started to take the berries right away. So this is a really nice start for Headbanger so far. And both players creating lots of villagers right now. Jose's built a little housing colony over here. So I don't know how Jose is planning on getting wood long term, but it feels like this is... Maybe the plan is to chop through these trees with a lumber camp. And then build the houses in a box around it. But yeah, I mean, if you're going to go auto scout, guys, you should start like the devs aren't going to make any changes to this. But if you're an if it's an auto scout war, there is always an advantage to the person that starts in the left corner. So if this game and you know, like when you when you play an AI and you beat an AI and the AI comes with excuses, he's like, I, uh, I forgot to clip my fingernails this week. Thou are victorious. You know, you probably haven't heard that particular one, but um, I can imagine that there could be something said about, you started in the right of the map. Or wait, left of the map. I ruined it. Town Bell, sorry. First cast in a long time. There's a lot of dead goats and there's a dead scout. Auto scout on the left side. No longer OP. And Jose was ready, dude. Ho Jose was ready for that Town Bell. Like, you wouldn't believe. Okay. So, Scout goes down for Headbanger. Headbanger's chilling. Did Headbanger find everything? Mm, Headbanger did a pretty good job. You've got the deer over here, which could be taken. You've got the boar there, which could be taken. Goats are running dry. A lumber camp would make a lot of sense at some point for both players. For the time being, Jose's just been collecting some wood from the straggler trees. But I think Jose has a plan. And Jose has made the mill there. Hmm. 
All right, chat. So listen, the challenge of Loey the Legends is to get into the mind of the player. Why would Jose place the mill there? Instead of, I was thinking between the berries, but, but we have to think, why here? And I think the answer is because Jose is going to farm like a madman and this is going to look really good with the farms. I think Jose has the plan is, is planning all about the farms. Recognizes that the berries are not long term and that farms are. So someone says because he's small brain. Yeah, coming from you, bro. I watched one of your games last night. Yeah, that's right. I saw you on the rank ladder. That's going to YouTube. No, I'm kidding. Well, maybe I'm not. Yeah, maybe maybe don't make fun of people's brains when you play online, huh? I can access your profile. Anyways, Scout's still scouting here for Jose. Is this Auto Scout? Hmm. See, Auto Scout usually starts on the right. But the way it's moving... Okay, that's definitely Auto Scout. I think Auto Scout just is... For whatever reason, has not gone to this right corner. I mean, maybe maybe... It's not as thorough as I thought. Maybe they changed it at some point. Okay, so we've got some long distance choppage on the trees here, but we do have a lumber camp finally. 24 villagers here for Jose. And for what I remember with Jose, Jose likes to build up the houses. Jose likes to take his time. Jose does not make a lot of army. Looks like Headbanger made a mill next to the boar, ate the boar, and we missed that. And now these villagers are making their move over to finish the goat. And the goat's gone. <laughs> there was literally one food left. <laughs> okay. All right. 11 villagers sent to finish one food on the goat. Now where are these vills going? Okay, what are you going to do now? Okay, ring around the rosy. Walking around the berries. Loey the legend style. Okay. Where are we going, headbanger? Headbanger? What are we doing here? Okay, we're going for the tree now. Okay, really undecided on what to do. And now these vills are going to walk over here and place a mill on the deer. Well, that, that makes sense. We do have a barracks here from Headbanger, so we might see some military. But I think this is just Headbanger going to the next stage and now thinking, what can I unlock? Like, what can I do? And the answer is wheelbarrow, then the wood upgrade. I imagine the farm upgrade might come in in the mill. And this is all fine. Getting those eco up upgrades are important. Farm's already coming in for Jose. Jose's on the way to the next stage as well. And we have ourselves a pretty relaxed game. So listen, uh, to those that are watching on YouTube, <clears throat> uh, you may already know this, but it's been a week and a half since I've done anything live after Hidden Cup 5. So we've got a lot of people who said some nice things. And have come in with resubs. So we're going to shout out to some of those people. Thank you, Brandon. For the year. Thank you, Haruko. Uh, Haruko says, The modern lel is better than me. Makes me feel bad, lol. You guys can leave a comment if you agree with that statement. Hi, Max. Thank you for almost two years. Uh, no worries, man. Glad you could make it now. Uh, thank you, Spaz. Thank you, Save Ray. Thank you, Dale. Thank you, D1000. And Clubbing Militia, which is a great name. Do you mean like you're clubbing people with the mace that they carry or whatever weapon they have? Or you're in the club? Hmm. I don't know. These are the questions I ask myself. So the, the eco upgrades now fly in for Jose. Res Collected is actually very even here, guys. Elo is close between these two. Look at the resources collected bottom left. It's crazy how balanced it is. I'm still really looking forward to Jose's farming, though. Like, Jose, for now, is going to clear out the deer. But I want to know how crazy Jose goes with the farms. I feel like the spacing might be perfect with this mill. What's up, Craven? Glad you could make it to Twitch. Thank you for the tier two. Agent, welcome back. Uh, Auto Scout still working here for Jose. Thus, the score lead. That scouting is going to be really nice. There's golden stone everywhere. There's actually quite a few relics on this map, too. I think there's something like seven or so relics, which is a little bit rare. I'm a little concerned for Headbangers long term when it comes to Food Eco, just because I think farming is... Because auto farm's always on for these guys, just feels like that's a really important thing to have. 
And the wood's not really floating that high here for Headbanger. But Headbanger is going to take the berries there. That should be fine. These villagers could maybe finish the deer and then head over to help out. Dude, guys. We judged... Well, I don't want to say we. Some of you judged the mill. The mill is perfectly centered for the farms. It's actually perfect. The berries will be slightly inefficient, of course. But I think Jose said, I want one mill. And I want that mill to be in the perfect spot. And the farms... Man, this could look really nice. If he cuts through here, he could have his houses in a box behind. His farms all wedged into the back of the map. Plenty of wood right now for Jose to work with and place his Teuton farms eventually. Hmm. Okay. Um. So I've noticed a trend here with Headbanger. And it could be bad for Jose. And that trend is Headbanger actually doesn't avoid making military. Jose is uh, is a player who prefers to chill. And again, I remember games from Jose. Jose would mainly play defense with like towers and castles and make Teutonic Knights. That's Jose's style. I don't know how much Jose has changed. I also don't know. Like I'm going off the top of my head here. Where are these bills going right now? Jose has the perfectly good gold in the back and needs gold right now to go Castle Age. And where does Jose go? To that gold. <laughs> because the enemy would never expect it. <laughs> I love it. I mean, there's this gold. There's this gold. There's so many golds. And Jose says, well, actually, I'm going to go for that one. So obviously, villagers are very exposed, but if the enemy doesn't scout it then maybe you can get away with it. We do have a scout being created right now from Headbanger. And a town bell from Headbanger. Uh, Jose's scout walked through. And I think Headbanger is going to kill this now. The scout is waiting. Sees the enemy scout. Seems scared of the enemy scout. And has not attacked it for some reason. Quick wall! <laughs> Can you imagine if a 450 elo player trapped that? I would blow my mind. It would blow my mind. Sorry. Um, all right. Anyways, the scout keeps moving. It didn't seem like Headbanger was wanted to alert the enemy that he had military there. Not really sure how much you know the players think about it there, but it did seem like there's a little bit of fear. Castle Age is in. All these villagers drop off wood, and they're now going to farm. Ooh. Okay. So I'm going to say something that is going to blow at least one person's mind here, okay? Because I feel like this is something that's happening all the time, but no one really knows. And people have had varying experiences in the game. You ready? If your villagers are carrying a resource and they build a farm, you get the resource you were carrying. So, for example, the wood there. What Headbanger did was dropped off the wood first and then sent them to farms because Headbanger was thinking, I don't want to lose wood. Going wood to food. No. Whether you have wood, gold, stone, food, it doesn't matter. If you build a farm and there's they're carrying resources prior to you telling them to build a farm, you get the resources. Okay? This also applies to making a lumber camp. So, like, let's say you have food and you make a lumber camp. The second lumber camp is built, you get the food. If you have food, you make a mining camp, you still get the food. Now, if you, if you have them on wood with the wood and you click them to a farm... Then you lose it once they start farming. But if you're building something, you're building an economic building, you get it. Does that make sense? So yeah, I, I, it's something that a lot of people still to this day don't know. There were some slight changes with how it worked. Like in the past, it didn't work quite like that. But yeah, uh, so now you know, in case you didn't know that. Like I said, at least one person's going to be like, huh? Because I see a lot of people force dropping. Okay. So, it feels like if Jose's going to win or lose this game, it is all about this. Because Jose has not done anything defensively. Jose is... <laughs> Jose is going to try and take the stone out here as well. Okay, so Jose's whole plan is hope that the opponent doesn't kill him. And then get away with taking as much golden stone as possible. Now, we are going to have supplies! And man-at-arms, and it, it's... I, I don't even know if Jose knows what those texts do. 
But I think Jose's going to be going for an infantry attack. This is very interesting. Why does this castle have 4,799 HP? How did it lose 1 HP? That's very weird. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stream cheat much? How did... Hold on a second. We must investigate. How does Headbanger know that Jose is here? Now, I'm assuming he saw it and I was blabbing my mouth. Huh? <laughs> Not gonna lie. This is awfully suspicious. Now, maybe Headbanger just set these different areas to scout and got extremely lucky. But Headbanger... Okay, I think was just scouting and then noticed this. And anyways, Headbanger's gonna find these villagers. And this is why you don't want to send villagers out unprotected. This is this is the whole strategy not paying off. And Jose is now probably a little frustrated with the situation. Now, I do think at this rank, you kind of look at these villagers as throwaways. You say, ah, oh, whatever. They can die. As long as my main eco is safe, this could be fine because maybe what Headbanger does, maybe Headbanger focuses only on this now. Hey, sir. But hey, it didn't lose that many villagers. He only lost two villagers. We do have pikemen on the way. I mean, the military is going to be there to defend from it. And we have Gambasons being researched there. Interesting choice there from Headbanger. I think Headbanger just wants some infantry techs. You can definitely tell that, like, the players don't know everything. So they think, okay, what techs can I get? That's always a good good practice. Okay, so now this is going to be defended by Pikeman. What does Headbanger do next? Headbanger knows the opponent's eco is here. And there's no military here for Jose. <laughs> it's so wild to me. We even have another villager going forward. I wonder if Jose is sending new villagers there. Look at this. Look at how the buildings are always built around the trees. There's something about this just looks so cool. Headbanger got fortunate once and is still looking around to see if the enemy has done that again. 41 villagers against 32 in a very close game. The scouts are going to notice the university. And the light calf are going to see that. Jose's villager is, tr is hidden behind the trees, and the villager is actually trapped. Okay. <laughs> Guys, I am very excited to see what a 400 ELO player does. <laughs> that is why I brought it up. <laughs> I was like, does he delete the three houses? Does he delete the university? Nope, just deletes the villager. Okay. <laughs> well, she's dead. And it's all right. Someone's going to replace her and, and build that monastery soon. And it seems like Headbanger's going to come over here and try and deal with this. But that is a lot of pikemen. And not too many organ guns. I mean, organ guns should be great against infantry. You just need quite a few of them. But Jose has definitely been working with here. It's just numbers. Jose is ahead with resources collected. I am concerned... For the long term for Jose, if Jose continues to leave villagers exposed, but like with the exception of that one villager that got deleted, Jose's main base has been fine. This is the strategy working, guys. Because if you're headbanger, you're just banging your head against the wall thinking, how do I deal with this? You don't think about the opponent's main eco, and then you don't realize this is still working out here. Sick. Uh, Steph Lifts, welcome. Uh, Adriel, thank you. Dugan, Strata, Catboy, thank you. Welcome, guys. Uh, Craven says, watch you on YouTube a lot. Welcome in Twitch, man. Ooh, second town center. I was wondering if we were going to see that. So second TC comes up. Now, obviously, they, they struggled producing out of their main one. Seems like Jose does continue to send villagers across the map. Jose is definitely a completionist, I would say. Like, really wants to get every technology. Look at the amount of technologies in the blacksmith that have been researched. We saw masonry earlier. We see guard tower now. These texts don't really help us. Oh, my God. Freaking Jose is going to build a forward castle here, and it's right next to all that gold. All right. Well, fully upgraded infantry, at least for Castle Age. Headbanger does not see that. Hmm. 
Looney Losers says Jose has improved around 100 ELOs since his first appearance on Lel about two and a half years ago. Looney Loser, can you tell me the title of that so when Hardy edits this later, he knows? Because I couldn't remember, but I, I pressed edit and Hardy's definitely going to message me and be like, what is this video? Because I've done so many Lolita Legend casts. I definitely remember Jose from the past though, and I thought it was around 100 ELO. Dude, if I'm... Like, Headbangers just built up the perfect force to deal with this. And by the time he gets enough to deal with this, this castle's gonna be up. Headbanger's gonna back away now. It does not seem like Jose is afraid to take this engagement. This is gonna be an absolute slaughter. And Jose backs away. 300 ELO showdown. Okay, thank you. Well, Hardy, when you're watching later on, and you want to seem smart for our YouTube audience. It was the 300 ELO showdown. I know you definitely were going to find that information yourself. Hmm. Magnet Mood says, is it a French thing to say hose instead of Jose? Uh, I don't know how many people are named or like Jose in France. I imagine very few. But the pronunciation is Jose. I think this player's from Spain. I think that's what his account said. So yeah, most likely Jose. I really like the fact that Headbanger is... Uh, I like the fact he's getting relics. And seems to be protecting this relic as well. Relics are so important at this elo because it's just a slow trickle of gold and gold is so important long term. Really should be thinking about one particular thing when there's a castle next to another castle, guys. And no, the answer is not murder holes. If, you, if you're wondering what to do in a game and you see your castle is next to your opponent's castle or their castle is next to your castle, you either start making rams right away with a bunch of army or you've got to go up to the Imperial Age. It does feel like Headbanger's a little worried about this though because Jose's been pretty aggressive. Does, you don't never know what your opponent's going to do. And look at the scouting. Guys, like, this is 430 ELO. These guys are really, really solid. Getting good technologies. I mean, geez, there's players who are in the top, like, 20 or 30 in the world who aren't getting techs like these guys. These guys also aren't distracted by other things. But very impressive. Interesting the headbanger deleted the mill. But it's going to drop castle number two to protect this area of the eco. Ooh, was just about to have the food to go up to the Imperial Age and decided to make 15 light cav instead. Or about seven light cav. Okay, seems to be... Ooh, is canceling light cav to get the resources for imp. Boom. Yo, they're imping at the same time. What? This is nuts. That's crazy, man. 45 villagers for both of them. Both on the way to the Imperial Age right now. Uh, the Portuguese do have access to the Fatoria, which can add to the eco side of things. So there is that. Uh, Jose going to get relic number one, though. Jose doesn't have a single defensive military building. It does have a guard tower, which is very well placed right next to the mill. There's something about it. It just looks so nice. But it is all going to be about this fight here. And who do you think wins this engagement, guys? Organs, pikes, and Lycav against rams and infantry. Mm, I'm going to have to go with the organ guns. The organ guns have range. They're great against infantry. There's enough meat shield in here for blue to be able to take out the rams. This is still just the forward base, though. Like, this isn't... Is, this isn't the main eco of Jose. So it's, if he loses the fight, it's not the end of the world. The food eco is ridiculous. But Blue's done a nice job. The best army compositions is when you have the meat shield and then you have range units behind. Those tend to be the best armies, so... Really impressed. Yo, Varvaris, what's up, man? Nice to see you, dude. Rigtone says, look at how much food Jose is floating on top of him. Yeah, I mean, Jose's really saving for later. I'm curious if Jose realizes these trees are gone and builds houses in this area. Like, if I know Jose, Jose is a planner, and Jose is going to build the houses there. 
Okay, so the monk actually died to the tower here. That was what we heard. Uh, Treb's immediate... Well, not not actually immediately here for Headbanger, because Headbanger's going to get conscription first. But goes for chemistry, presumably for Bombard Cannons. Uh, isn't producing anything out of this castle. That's always something that could be improved, but does have Treb's in queue. And we have Ironclad for Jose. Okay, so that adds melee armor to your uh, to your siege. These are still capped rams, though. Uh, actually, no, they're battering rams. Sorry, they're they're not even capped rams. So these are still castle age upgraded rams. I think I would like it a little bit more if the capped ram upgrade came in. Crenellations! Yo! Okay, so these castles are going to have 13 range. This is unique to the Teutons. That's a sick technology. It's so expensive, too. And chemistry on the way. We also have the infantry being upgraded. Now, the castle fire will not outrange Trebs. And it... I mean, I don't want to take credit for this, but I'm totally going to. I feel like Headbanger has heard me say, do not trickle Treb a few times. Is really being patient here. It's like, okay, when I make my move, I need to make sure I'm taking this castle out. And castle range. Range the houses here. Ranging the villagers. That is a lot of arrows there out of the castle. And yeah, wait till you have about four trebuchets and then you can make your move. Headbangers Trebs are in position. Hmm. Does Conscription affect Trebs training time? I don't actually know if Conscription affects Siege. It definitely falls into the category of something I should know after the ungodly amount of time I put into this game. But I, I know things that I would say are relevant knowledge. I don't know if you'd ever research Conscription for Siege and something that is very relevant and something that we knew was that this would not be a good fight for Jose. Choo, choo! The rams come in, though. He's going to go for the castle. It's actually pretty interesting because the infantry is going to hop out. The rams are still working. There's also still a treb here. If these were capped rams, this might have worked. Hold on. Okay, panic time from Headbanger. Is this working? Are the two ironclad battering rams actually doing this? No way, dude. Holy crap. What a play from Jose. This is completely unexpected. I, there's no way that this castle was expected to go down, and it is going to go down. And, you know, after that, it seems like Headbanger is going to be a little bit stunned. Oh, hold on. Is repairing. 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 No, Zay! Oh, that's brutal. Well, Jose was incredibly close with one more ram or the capped ram upgrade. The castle would have gone down. Halbs are going to come in now for the treps that are pretty unprotected, but you do have a few organ guns here. It's still not a bad find for Jose. All things considered, it's like you've taken out some treps. You killed a lot of army. You, your opponent is reacting to you. Eco back at home. Still looking pretty nice. The villagers... <laughs> you could tell Jose hasn't looked back here in a while. These villagers were on the lumber camp. The lumber camp was actually deleted, though. He definitely deleted it. But he hasn't built a new one. Okay, we have more upgrades. Jose's thinking, what could I do differently this time? And Jose says, shoot, I forgot to get armor. So there's the armor. Oh, there is actually a lumber camp here. Interesting. Okay. A headbanger going to make more organ guns. Yeah, it just it still feels like organ guns should be so good against infantry, but it was the combination of the infantry inside the rams that was really cool. Because the rams soak up a lot of damage and it allows the infantry to hit their shots. Five relics for headbanger, who's now just gonna treb down the mining camp. And Jose sees that. Jose repairs the mining camp. <laughs> Uh, and Jose comes in to take out the Trebs, does take one of them, is now moving in to get the second, and will not get it because the organ guns are insane against infantry. So it's like, are you prepared to tech switch here? Are you aware that that needs to happen, or 
you know, is Jose just going to be stubborn and try the same thing? Looks like some stone is going to be mined. What would be really good here with the Teutons is dropping some stables and going for the Paladin line. We are going to have a bombard cannon out of the Siege Workshop, though. It just feels like for now, Jose is just still going to produce out of these buildings here. Hmm. Uh, Adam, thanks for the seven months. Puhi, thank you for the 50. Nice to see you. Good to be back. Um, no, I did not do any streams since Hidden Cup beyond this. I haven't done like a Q&A on Hidden Cup stream or anything like that. I'm going to do a... Ooh. This is... This is rather interesting. I'm going to do a video where I talk about everything Hidden Cup related. Um, I might end up doing it in, in the form of a stream this week, but I'm not sure. But currently, the plan is to do it in, in video form. Okay, nice snipe there from the Bombard Cannon. But the Bombard Cannon is slightly more expensive than the Shreb. Bombard Cannon doesn't really get the value. Ironclad upgrade is still strong, though. You can see how long it takes to take out the infantry there. I think what Jose needed was for this to get killed off and for him to still have time. And this is, again, the benefit of the forward base because it's like, if this was at your eco, you're, you're, you're dead. You don't have any chance to really think about the next game plan. Looks like this gold has been finished and Jose's going to run over here for gold. But yeah, Jose's forward's going to be down and now Jose can think about the plan and Jose's going to drop stables. Or at least one stable. Now, we're also going to see a barracks. And wood is actually a concern for Jose, I'm noticing. So it's not going to be easy to make many production buildings. I'm wondering if we're going to see upgrades out of this stable or what. Bloodlines, knights, and then cavalier. Okay. I like it when you're watching low elo players and you can tell they're like looking through to see what options they have. Like they produce one of each building. Uh, one of each unit, for example. Like, here's one of each building. Stable, barracks, and siege workshop. This is the classic Loey the Legend thinking of how can they counter everything? <laughs> they don't really think about making one really strong unit and making a lot of them. Unless you're Headbanger. I mean, Headbanger's killing it right now. Five relics. Most of the relics on the map have been collected. There is actually one more relic here, which I assume Jose sees. Jose sees the whole map. Jose hasn't taken any gold at the starting base. Or stone, actually. It's going to be Cavalier. Look, look at the barracks, guys. Two-handed swordsman, help. Two-handed swordsman, help. So Jose just goes and boop, 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 boop. <laughs> I love, like, Headbanger could win this game right now, but Headbanger is a little scared. Because the enemy built that forward base, and now Headbanger's like, okay, where is he? And I don't know if this is intentionally scouting with the Treb, but just missed out on seeing this. If Headbanger just goes over to Jose's base with, like, three units, Jose will probably ring the town bell and panic. But we're not seeing that because they think about the main battle people. Salutes and chat, please, for V. Thank you for the three years, my friend. Enjoy the green batch. Okay. Final attack upgrade coming in for Jose. Oh, yeah. And Jose's filling the gaps in the houses. Let's go, baby. Let's go. This is what we wanted to see from Jose. This is the only golden come for Jose, by the way. Those six villagers. What is the plan here for Headbanger? Five relics. Organ guns that have Archibus. Res collected is identical for them right now. About 40,000 resources collected for both. The KD obviously has been much better here for Headbanger, though. I still do feel like a couple Bombard Cannons with a bunch of Cavalier could be really strong. Then again, the opponent does have Hal, but there's not that many. Hmm. Yo, Gandalf, what's up? You're welcome, man. Thank you. All right, final armors coming in now for the calf. Siege engineers as well. And also arrow slits. So these techs do apply. Siege engineers helps the siege. Arrow slits helps the tower. 
<laughs> the singular tower. <laughs> but hey, it still helps. Headbanger just got pop capped. We're about to see 100 population here for Headbanger. Mm. And Headbanger is going to make a monk. I think he wants to heal these. Maybe he saw the other relic, but I'm pretty sure Jose picked it up and has it on the way home or something. I want to see what does Headbanger see at the moment. Okay, so notice the mining camp. Notice the mining camp. Sire, we are surround surrounded by enemy mining camps. What shall we do? <laughs> I mean, Headbanger's got this gold and then these golds, and I, I want to say that's it. Like, you know, it's still a lot, right? But but my point is, is Jose's still saving this for later, dude. Like, Jose is thinking long term. It really bothers me Jose doesn't have a farm here, by the way, but whatever. Houses look great. All right, there's going to be a capped... There's the capped ram upgrade. More gold's going to be mined here. Paladin upgrade is on the way out of the one stable. Something that Blue is doing a really good job of is producing different types of units, but also, like, producing w with more consistency. Blue's got a massive army. Maybe Blue thinks just come and break me. Like, maybe Blue thinks he can't lose with these resources. No Fatorius, which the Portuguese could do. Hmm. Someone says, as a kid, if I managed to convert an enemy unit, I remember I would try and protect it. <laughs> That's funny. I don't think I did that with converted units. You know what? what is, like, so rare? I think I've only seen it twice in uh, my casting career. Is if you convert an enemy transport... Uh, while they have their units inside. Because if you convert an enemy transport, it's your transport, but their units are inside of it. And a lot of people think, as we see a castle in the back now, a lot of people think what you do there is you delete the transport and then you kill their units. No, no, no. That is not what you do, guys. If you ever convert an enemy transport ship, the best thing for you to do is hide the transport ship. Hide it, because you have one population for the transport, and they have whatever population space stuck inside of that transport ship. So if there's like 20 units in that transport ship, that's 20 pop space that they don't have. And there's no way for them to be able to delete them. Like you can't check for idle villagers and check for idle army and delete it when they're in the transport ship. Um, I remember a game on Migration in Titans League where someone converted the enemy transport ship. It was It was pretty funny. I think they lost the transport ship immediately afterwards, but still. Maybe they deleted it. So I guess maybe the thinking here from Jose is by the if the enemy shows up, this area will be fortified. It's a big army. 47 villagers for both of them. Why that number? I mean, what are the chances? Again, res collected is is so close. 48,000 resources collected for both. The relics is split five to four. This is closer than any game was in Hidden Cup. Let's be honest. <laughs> okay, that's not exactly true. <laughs> but maybe if we had a best of seven here, we'd get like a 4-3. <laughs> we'd get like a 4-3 scoreline more than once. 48 villagers feels like too many. Really? Is that it? I like the formations here from Headbanger. Look at that. Oh, man, it's about to go down, people. It's about to go down. Okay, light cavalry positioning. I love it. Jose just goes... Jose doesn't press formations. Jose just goes for the big blob technique. I don't mind it. Here go the light calf. This seems like a scouting party. Um, Will they see anything? It's actually really important for Jose... That headbanger sees this. You might think that's crazy, but I think it's a bigger problem for Jose if these light cav get to his eco and surprise! Okay, the light cav found this. And now they run away. Now, I don't know what Blue is role playing, but if he was, he would have to actually report the information back to his friends. So here they go. Puffin and a puffin. They're running on home. And these light cav now share the news. And let the organ guns know. Hey, we saw an enemy army out there. And watch, the organs are going to move now. 
the organs are going to react. They're going to be like, oh, really? Where are, where are the organ? Uh, wh where is the enemy army? And Headbanger will be like, to the north, sire, to the north. And the organ guns are going to freaking move. Headbanger, move your organ guns. You're ruining it. Okay, well, information is still being shared. Uh, it, it could be a communication issue. There's another castle here from Headbanger. This is just wild to me, though, as we have Elite Teutonic Knight research. It's wild to me that this whole eco, for the most part, is all so exposed. And Headbanger doesn't go there once. They don't think about raiding too much of this elo. They just think about the main fight. Live viewers, YouTube later on. Do you agree? What, is that how you played when you first started playing the game? That's how I played. No one thought about, like, chipping away at someone's eco and... Yeah, it was just, you make one army, your brother makes another army, and then, you know, you sneak in a cheat code or two when he's not looking, and then you win the fight, and then that's it. And then you just start over, and you just build up for three hours, and then you take another fight, and then that's it. Dude, <laughs> Headbanger is building a lot of castles for someone who doesn't think raiding is possible, though. Also, a lot of Bombard Cannons, too. So it's Paladin, Champion, Halb, Ram... And then Teutonic Knights, and look at them go! Look at the KP boys go! <laughs> He's got one of the slowest units in the game, and he has set his rally point on the other side of the map. So I hope you don't need speedy reinforcements here, Jose, because if you need speedy reinforcements, you pick the wrong unit. But the capes waddle forward here, and they're ready to go. Now, I, I do still think a big problem is the organ gun. Elite organ gun. I actually think it's... I think it's one of the most imbalanced units in the game right now. But no one talks about it at the high level. Because we rarely see elite organ gun come in. It is so good. Basically, they nerfed the Castle Age version. And they... I don't think people realize how insane the Imperial Age version is. You know, against like archers and... Really, any unit except for Siege. It's fantastic. I do think these rams... With the ironclad armor, need to add a lot here for Jose, and it did add a lot for Jose before. Uh, Jose with Siege Onager or Onager would change my mind. Here we go. So here's the infantry. The Light Cav and the Halbs haven't attacked for the enemy yet. And the Organ Guns are just destroying everything here. This is just brutal. Now the Halbs were going to go engage, but their friends are now dead. And the Paladins realize maybe we shouldn't take this fight anymore. Okay. Here comes Headbanger, moving in with Halbs and Lycab on the front and the Organ Guns behind. Also has a nice choke point here. This could be bad for Jose here. Jose needs to click those Rams into the fight. The Rams have to play a role here in some way. Because if not, this is not going to be good for him. The Paladins are holding their own. They're a lot stronger than the Infantry. Still, the organ guns, though, are melting the paladins. Okay, the meat shield on the front is gone. The bombard cannon's getting some hits. The paladins are going to chase it down. And now you do need to micro a little bit here for your headbanger. And headbanger's going to back away. Maybe Jose will see that and say, I need more bombard cannons. Here comes some light cap for that bombard cannon. I don't think Jose even knows the bombard cannon is there. Never mind, I take it back. Jose saw this. Jose goes to defend the Bombard Cannon. It does have Ironclad, so it might survive. Or... No, it doesn't survive. Bombard Cannon goes down. Monk goes down. Nice engagement there from Headbang. Hmm. Okay. So, guys, it took, like, what? 20 minutes for them to build up that army? Now they've got to build them up again. <laughs> So we've got some time. Uh, this is now the intermission period where, you know, like if this was, if I was a, a a standard YouTuber, I would use this time to thank our sponsor for sponsoring the uh, th this this amazing Loey the Legend game. For now, I'll just point out that we've got these villagers still mining away on gold. Still no stone being mined elsewhere for Jose. Jose is still addicted to building houses around the trees. Okay. Uh, there is gold being mined somewhere for Headbanger. Oh, of course, that's here. 
Still, resources collected is pretty much identical. I, I would obviously lean towards Headbanger because Headbanger's got the extra relic. I also think organ guns are insanely strong, but you can't... I think the Rams showed us already how good they can be at just, just soaking up damage. And guys, these aren't just any Rams. These are Rams filled with Teutonic Knights. Crazy. Yeah, we do still have the Surfshark emote. We do still have the Surfshark link. If you guys would like to still take advantage of the deal we had with Hidden Cup and Surfshark. That was... Oh, finally, some more stone being mined. That was a, a sponsorship solely for Hidden Cup, but... Definitely okay with giving Surfshark some more love. Hmm. Goatmeister, what's up? Says, hey, T90, first time catching the stream since Hidden Cup, which was amazing, by the way. Hope you enjoyed some well-earned rest. Well, hello! This also is the first time I've been streaming since Hidden Cup, so... I'm glad you made it back already. Capped Rams, Caped Rams, yep, I like it. I, I think Jose's chances are going up now that he's mining stone. Remember, Jose still has all this gold available that he's just basically saved. And I guess, like, in theory, once all the resources run dry elsewhere on the map, Jose will still have more to work with. And Jose could be in the better position then. Elite Goose, thank you for the 16. Thank you, uh, Kilt, Kilt, Kilt. I can't say your name, but thank you for the nine months. <laughs> Cryptics, welcome back. Uh, yes, I am sure that I'm not casting a campaign scenario. It does feel a little campaigny. I love how Jose brought another monk forward just to heal up everything. It's really smart. Hmm. God, that is so many organ guns. Man, if only Jose went for Onager. Like, if you get a couple Onagers, you'll flatten these. Bombard Cannons can still help. And there are the Bombard Cannons now. Now, will Headbanger see that? Headbanger can see the cannonballs flying through the air. I think that's an attack ground from Jose. I think Jose is attack grounding. Or at least he did. Organs are going to go to the hill. Halbs have to reposition. This would be a bad fight for the Halbs against champions. Here come the organs. The Bombard Cannons connect. Nice shot. Nice micro from Jose. Unit control is difficult. The Rams are being hidden. Do we see the Rams now? One of the Bombard Cannons goes down. The other one's still firing. The Halbs are out of position. Working guns backing away. The halves get brought to the hill. This is an epic duel here, people. I mean, guys, this is the first low elo game that I've covered in months, and it's already a banger. This is so good. Okay, so there's six rams, but every single one has six units in it. What is that, 36 units in there? Yeah, 36 military hidden inside the rams. Okay, is he going to sneak? Hmm, I think he doesn't want his opponent to see this. And Headbanger didn't see it. I think I think Jose's just going to take the fight. <laughs> Yo, this is epic. Okay, the Paladins will engage. This could be a bad fight for Jose because the other military units are off in the Rams. The Paladins are still doing pretty good against the Organs. And then here we go. The choo-choo. <laughs> Here come the Rams with the Teutonic Knights. It's a full clear up over here. Now, Headbanger had a lot of army prepared. And Jose ejects one of the Rams. Jose ejects another Ram. Jose is going to have Teutonic Knights, Champions, and Halves. And what happens is the Rams are the focus of the military. So the KP boys and everything just chews up the rest of this. Look, how, look at how crazy that fight was. Now, TC is going to go down. A couple villagers are going to go down. That's a lot of Bombard Cannons. Oh my god, Blue. 12 Bombard Cannons? Uh, well, yeah, hopefully you get some organ guns out here. Uh, okay. I mean, Castle Fire is not great. But I think the Teutonic Knights are still going to get some decent kills here. These things are tanky. And kind of like before, earlier on in the game, there's one Ram that has survived. Look at these capes go. Now, this, this ram is not going to take out the castle. Murder Holes is in. But what a fun engagement. Oh, God. Blue just actually damaged his own castle more than the ram did. Okay. 
And now we have a reset. And now we're probably going to see more Teutonic Knights out of this castle. We're going to see more Paladins, more Champion Halb, Champion Halb, Champion Halb, Champion Halb. More Bombard Cannons, more Rams. And, you know, Headbanger rang the town bell, so a lot of these villagers are currently not working. And that was some pretty decent damage, down to 33 villagers. But only like, you know, 10 or so of those villagers are actually working right now for Headbanger. And now the town bell has been unrung. We are going to see a castle here. Now that's important. Because if you can get... Right now the opponent doesn't have a lot of trebs. And this is going to give Jose forward Teutonic Knight production. And remember, Bombard Cannons get outranged by Teuton Castles. So I actually think this castle... It, this castle makes me think that Jose is going to win this game. This is like, guys, this has been the low elo player's dream. Take all the extra golds and stones. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them. Go for a forward base. Have the main eco be cute and tidy, right? Which is, is like the dream scenario for a lot of low elo players. Go for Teutonic Knights. Go for Crenellations. Fill up a bunch of rams. Have some sneak attacks. We haven't seen a single archer. Not one archer. This is the low elo player's dream. This is sick. Thank you, Good Cat, uh, for the 38 months. Thank you, Jetamac, for the new prime. Thank you, As the Power. Thank you, Lord Metzger Meister. Welcome for thank you for the two years, my friend. Um, yeah, and now we're gonna have double Teutonic Knight production from this position. Or I, I actually it's not it's not double production from this position. Obviously, the other castle back here. But now you just don't need to produce from this one at all. I, I still would like suggest to maybe like make a couple more barracks and stables. But maybe that makes things too complex here for Jose. Hmm. So for all that talk of, of Orkin Guns being overpowered, I haven't yet seen a fight that's made me... I mean, there was one engagement against, I think, infantry where they wrecked, but it actually seemed like the ram strategy and the paladins did a pretty good job here, especially considering there's been halb out there. How does this game end? <laughs> I think this game ends when Jose rams down the enemy base with one of these attacks. But there's so many castles here. Or, or... If we see a raid, like if Headbanger sends a light cav into his opponent's eco, that could change things. Now, because that is a very real possibility, I would still like to see Jose make another castle here. I think with a castle here, you're you're pretty well protected. But we are not seeing that at all. Asian Persuasion says, uh, watch on YouTube for two years. First time in chat and Twitch. Nice. Welcome. Is the 717... Sorry if this is weird. If this is your first time watching live. Is the 717 in your username an area code? By chance? I ask because where I grew up, my area code was 717. Okay, so now and only now Jose has started to take some of the gold that he saved back at his base. We're going to have militaries of over 100 for both of them. I'm not trying to dox anyone with an area code, guys. Calm down. But yeah, uh, I grew up in Central PA, so it stood out to me. Um, It's been a fun game. It's been 55 real-time minutes. It's been an hour and a half game time. And this is going to be a banger of a finish. I mean, they have the resources to both go up to like 160 army, guys. <laughs> It's not. It's my birthday. Oh, got it. Okay. Well, happy. Uh, well, it's not. It's not close to that. But uh, happy birthday four months in advance. They only have forty some vills. Nice job from Blue, by the way, to produce a few more after losing some. Again, I think Onager, Onager would would do wonders here for Jose. But Jose's got five Rams filled with Teutonic Knights again. Is going to have a treb too. Sick. There's going to be 30-ish Paladins, 25-ish Champions and Halbs. Here come the Light Calf. Headbanger continues to do this. It's smart. He wants to know what the opponent has. And now he sees the castle. 
So now he's probably like, crap, man. It's like every time I go back, my opponent has more. <laughs> Again, doesn't run into the full, the exposed eco. I guess they're not too big on like, you know, war crimes. Maybe they fight with some honor. They're like, listen, the people who were made to fight, fight. Let's not go kill the innocent villagers here. Mm, wow, that's a lot of bomber cannons, man. That is... I mean, normally, you don't want to go bomber cannons against the Teuton Castle. You have that many bomber cannons, you can go after Teuton Castle all you want. <laughs> Look at the armies! It's 150 army for both! The castle's also filled with Teutonic Knights, so there's going to be lots of extra arrows here. There's only three bomber cannons for Jose. Now, last time, Jose didn't want to use the rams in the main engagement. This is epic. And what Jose wanted to do was use the rams as a sneak attack. Okay, well, this is this is not so good for the infantry. The bomber cannons are now on the castle. At least one or two of them is. The, the pathing is taking them out of the way. And the castle currently is just firing on the units that are on the front and not taking out the bomber cannons. There go the paladins for some of the bomber cannons. The halves were waiting, though. Epic micro here from Headbanger. Headbanger's unit control has been a lot better than Jose's, in my opinion. But maybe I shouldn't speak too soon. Oh, God. So many bouncing balls. Oh, God. Paladins make it through. Oh, bomber cannons are going down. This is why you make 15 of them. <laughs> Paladins are gone. Bombard Kitten's still here for blue. He lost five, had 10 more. And this is, might be panic time here for Jose. Jose's got 50 Teutonic Knights. Half of them are inside the Rams. The others are inside the castle. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Castle, castle. Castle's at wrecking the cannons. Can we get some repairs on this castle? Oh, God. Dude, this castle's been insane. And now Paladins are out. Now the castle's going to go down. Castle will fall. And here come the Teutonic Knights. This is what was waiting for him. Now, Teutonic Knights are infantry. Gunpowder is normally very good against infantry. But this is not your typical infantry. For they have capes. Still feels like the meat shield from the Halbs. So good here. It's giving the Organ Guns so much time. Also, what I appreciate during these moments and during these fights is that you can tell they're not producing any more army. Like, there's no multitasking. There's a time for eco and there's a time for fighting, and that was a time for fighting. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Jose's making another one. Jose, you got to use your rams here, pal. You got to use your rams. You got to... You can't just build this castle. Okay, he deleted it. Um, villagers are going to fight back. Teutonic Knights are hopping out of the Rams. Now, I think if the Rams were clicked in on the organ guns, it actually could be really good. Because you need the Ram distraction. Remember, Jose still has the main base. This isn't Jose's base. Now, I think Jose really values this area, but whoop! More Teutonic Knights hop out. Okay, Paladins come through. Okay, organ guns are making it in close. And now we have more micro here from Headbanger. Yeah, this this is good micro from Headbanger. Like, hitting and running is what you want with range units. And especially against Teutonic Knights. Like, Teutonic Knights are so slow. Rams are still back here. <laughs> These Teutonic Knights saw what happened. They're going to hop inside the Rams. We've got more champions on the way. Now the Teutonic Knights are out of the Rams. <laughs> I guess, like, Jose just wants some peace and quiet here. So he could he could do what he wants with this, but he just doesn't have the time. <laughs> okay, now everything's out of the Rams again. The Organ Guns have continued to destroy. There are more Bomber Cannons in queue at home for Headbanger and Organ Guns. So it's like, how do you answer the Organ Guns? And the answer is a Bombard Cannon. But unfortunately, the Bombard Cannon now has no protection. And Jose resigns! No! Jose!
You had your main base, Jose. You had resources, Jose. It, you know, it's funny because we're sitting here thinking that Jose's plan is to use the side base, but the side base isn't everything, right? That's the thinking. The thinking is the side base is, is just a distraction, but I don't think it was a distraction. I think that's Jose's entire plan, and I think Jose couldn't... It was too much, too many units lost. Maybe the, the fights were looking a little too overwhelming for him. And he just didn't think that he could still use these resources. I mean, I still think it's doable. Also, mods... Oh, we're getting raided. Ah, I was like, why are my... Why on earth are, like, my viewers looking like a bunch of bots? Okay, makes sense. Uh, thank you, Dave, for the raid. Anyways, uh... I think Jose could have still won this game. Jose could have absolutely still won this game. There's gold everywhere. There's stone everywhere. He could have built up some buildings and gone for it again. That said, very well played from Blue. Salute so in chat, please, for Blue. Because his micro was fantastic. That was a very good game. Look at the difference in res collected. 90,000 resources against 90,000 resources. If we're rounding down and rounding up. Uh, the type of resources obviously varied. There was more food for Jose because of the Teuton farms. Relics, it was like five against four. It was really close. And wow. Okay, so on average, Jose had three economic actions per minute. And they tied at nine military actions per minute in that game. So they were very close, very evenly matched. Maybe we'll get a rematch at some point. But yeah, first Louis the Legend cast in many months and a hell of a game. Great stuff.